Hello there. Today I want to discuss taking care of your tools. It don't matter whether you got a little handsaw or, or a whole array of tools. You must take care of them. They'll give you years of service. And your workmanship is only as good as the tools that you use. And not that my workmanship is really all that great at all, but the woodworking projects that you have seen here uh, would look like that of a five-year-old if I didn't have the tools, especially the power tools necessary to do the job. But anyways, whether it's power tools or whether it's hand tools, it's all the same. Here, here is a supposedly a half-inch electric drill. Well, it is a half-inch. The chuck, the chuck is a half-inch capacity. And I bought this quite a few years ago, and it's a cheapie, made in China. Uh, it says California and uh, USA, but believe me, it's made in China. And um, it overheats very badly if you load it down. You can use a one-inch bit, such as I've got here, to when I uh, do uh, locks and stuff. But if you put the two-inch bit in there and try to do it, this thing will just about stall out. It's gear-driven. It's supposed to be a hammer drill, but this is what you got to look for, look out for. When I bought this, this has a uh, what I call a, uh, a paper thin cord. I mean, this cord here is probably kill that thing. <laughs> uh, this cord here is, um, I would say, not even just about a quarter inch thick. So that tells you right there if you got a cord that's that thin on a drill that supposedly handles a half inch capacity drill bit you know this thing isn't going to have the power when you start a drill and start putting a, a two inch bit on this thing uh, it took a long time to do it and this thing was uh, very very hot in fact it started smoking now if you buy American made I bought this at a yard sale for five bucks and there's what you call a cord you know that that's going to handle the amperage. You know that this is built very well. This is American made. You can see the size of the cord. It's about 3 8 inch in diameter. Now putting a heavy cord on that first drill I showed you would not accomplish anything because the motor would overheat anyhow. But this one here has served me, I had this for quite a few years. I use this for my uh, screwdrivers, driving uh, the uh, sheetrock wood screws into my woodworking projects. It's reversible and so forth. So you get what you pay for. Um, now this one here, I had it for quite a few years. I don't recall whether I got this at a yard sale or not. But if you want good quality tools, and you haven't got the money to buy good quality tools, uh, keep your eye out on yard sales, because I'll tell you what, there's a lot of good American-made tools that are oldies but goodies, and I'm going to show you an oldie but goodie right now. Here is an old Black & Decker, and you might have seen this on one of my other videos. I only paid $2 for this. This tag is still on here. Maybe we should take it off uh, from a yard sale about three, four years ago, I guess at least. Now. When I say take care of it, you just take a little WD-40. This is the original blade, and the blade was rusty when I got it. You just uh, spray it after you're done using it. It keeps the blade from getting any worse. And uh, this this cord here has got to be close to a half inch in diameter at least. And uh, you know, you know, this thing's got some power. And this thing weighs about 10 pounds, I would say. Now, this is when they made tools. I mean, it's a little heavy to use. But, you know, you're not going to stall this out very easily. I'll tell you, that's a real, real nice saw. So this is where I find a lot of the tools. Uh, if I want good quality tools, I'll uh, check the yard sales. This is, you've seen this before, my Ryobi uh, chop saw. And this one's made in Japan, but uh, uh, this is the exception to some of the uh, foreign tools. This is a really good saw. And I paid 20 bucks for this at a yard sale about three, four years ago. 10 inch, it does everything I want it to do. Now, I have to spray this again with some WD-40. 
Uh, I keep it in the shed, of course, with all my other stuff. And it gets used quite regularly. And um, it's not a compound miter, but I'm no good at doing compound miters anyway. So uh, just a regular miter saw, and it does everything I want it to do. And just spray a little bit. Naturally, it's unplugged. I wouldn't do this if it wasn't. And same with the other side. That's all. I just used this yesterday, so it doesn't look like I cleaned it, but I did. And that's it. And that just keeps the blade from getting rusty because here it's a very damp area. I have the uh, brook nearby and so forth, so uh, as you've seen on some of my earlier videos there, the fungus blues, well, uh, there's a lot of fungus out here and there's the dampness and everything else, so you have to keep things um, pretty well uh, oiled as far as the blades and so forth is concerned. This is another goodie I got from Yard Sale, Porter Cable Trim Saw. I believe it's a five or a five and a quarter inch, you can't read the blade anymore. But uh, that's the original blade too, and of course even though I WD-40 the blade and everything else, it uh, has rust on it that's been on for years. But, uh, it's uh, definitely American made. And uh, I paid around five bucks for this I believe. I got this about eight years ago or so at a yard sale. I did not get a yard sale. I bought this about, oh, I got, I got to say at least 25 years ago. Uh, Craftsman, of course, uh, scroll saw. It has the, uh, kind of hold the camera and do everything at once. Uh, one thing you have to look out for when you buy a used tool is make sure the bearing isn't worn in here. And uh, you just check for side to side motion. There should be a little up and down motion, you know, in and out. That's fine. But if you get side to side, the lateral movement, that means this bearing is worn in here. And um, I had one that I, the, the one I had before this was totally worn out. And the bearing was all shot from just a lot of usage. Uh, this one here has uh, very, very, very slight uh, side to side uh, motion. But uh, it served me well for many, many years. And you can see the cord on this is decent size too. So I uh, never had any problem with this. Very good little saw. These two saws I picked up for 50 cents a piece this year at a yard sale. And um, even though I have one of these miter saws, couldn't pass it up. Now this might look like a toy, but you know what? This is a fine, fine tooth trim saw that uh, is coming very handy and um, gets into tight places and so forth. And um, I oil this, but you know, this stuff don't come off. This is the real thing. This is a real half inch drill. Uh, let's see if I can read that. Well, tell you what, I got this also at a yard sale, uh, I would say about 12 years ago or so. And, uh, I'll tell you, I drilled a, I used a four inch hole saw on that thing, that thing twists, that thing that locks up in the, in the, uh, the wood, this will spin you right around. Bolt cutters, well, here's an example of two cheap bolt cutters. Because I have very rarely any use for a bolt cutter, I get the cheapies. I got this for cutting off the sheetrock screws when they protrude down where you can cut you if you're putting it into thin wood and they work but you can see being made in China you can see where the edges are just not uh, holding up but for five dollars I'm not going to complain here is a larger version 18 inch one also a tai uh, Taiwan special probably and uh, I haven't used it all that much. I did use it on some um, quarter-inch screws, and they work quite well. But I don't expect it to hold up too much. So whether it's my hairbrush, steel bristles, 
or any other tool, you have to take care of them. A little WD-40 and that's all you really need to do and wipe them down, take good care of them.